بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب يشرح لي صدري ويرسل لي أمري وهل العرت من لساني يفكه كولي أما بع السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and good day to everyone so الحمد لله we meet again uh, on the next on our next sessions so which mean these sessions so today mark uh 25 days of uh, ramadan so another five days to go before we meet uh shawal so another five days left uh, in ramadan so embrace yourself more this and less this one right so hopefully everyone's uh going well uh, let's continue uh, our class, which is uh, now we, I'm going to introduce to you, share with you a uh, new chapter, which is uh, chapter 6, uh, entitled Polymerous Chain Reactions or Nonsense uh, PCR. And I do believe that uh, most of you uh, already know about uh, PCR because I already explained it uh, in class. And furthermore, for the individual assignment, you guys, uh, some of you guys already did really good jobs uh, to explain about polymerous chain reaction, which is PCR, related uh, in uh, you know medical applications, agriculture applications, so drug development uh, uh, field by using uh, PCR. Uh, today, I'm going to explain to you. Uh, the process that involved in uh, PCR and also I will discuss a little bit applications on the PCR and last one uh, we will compare the concepts between PCR and RT-PCR that become uh, more famous and uh, you know since this is the COVID-19 seasons okay so to recognize COVID-19 in a patient we use a PCR mainly we use a RT or QT or QRT PCR to detect uh, the uh, detections of COVID-19 in a patient but uh, I'm not going to finish uh, the whole chapter by today I'm going to do it like half half so this is the part one maybe I'm going to explain to you until the process of a PCR so this is the learning outcome that you you guys uh, should uh, go back. So after you finish uh, uh, learning on chapter 6, you have to go back and ask yourself uh, to answer those questions from the learning outcome that I always emphasize in the class. Okay, so a little bit introductions. So uh, PCR, or known as polymerase chain reactions, is the in vitro techniques, right? So why is it in vitro? Because it's happened outside the living organisms. Okay? So before PCR been uh, invented, we use uh, uh, Mendy E. coli bacteria to amplify our gene of interest. Then the technique we call it in vivo, which we, because it happened in the organisms. And uh, before PCR, DNA of interest could only amplify by overexpress in a cell, and this with limited yield. Of course, when we did in a, in a, a, a organism uh, example uh, E. coli, we will face uh, difficulties. All right, to find a suitable uh, host and suitable uh, a vector or plasmid that involve to amplify our gene of interest. But then, when PCR be invented, uh, those uh, uh, difficulty can be overcome. And uh, this is a little bit background of the PCR. So on 1916, Thomas Brock discovered Thermus aquatus, aqua, aquaticus, a thermostable bacteria in the hot spring of the Yellowstone National Park. So Thomas Brock is a microbiologist, a really famous microbiologist. Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, which, which uh, microbiologist book uh, do you use, but in my case. Uh, I'm using a uh, uh, microbiologist reference book from uh, Thomas Brook, right? So this uh, scientist found a thermos aquaticus that can live in the hot spring in the Yellowstones back in 1966. 
But then on 1983, thanks to Kelly Mullis, uh, really brilliant scientist that postulated the concepts of the PCR while he uh, was working with uh, uh, Centers, Centers is it? Uh, a company that uh, eventually uh, gave him opportunity to win a Nobel Prize back in 1993 in chemistry. In, uh, in 1985, a co-worker of Kerry Mullis, uh, Psyche, published the first applications of PCR, uh, which is involved beta globin uh, proteins. So, in 1985, uh, uh, Citus Co Corporation scientists isolate thermostable tech polymerase from uh, Thermos Aquaticus, which revolutionized PCR. Okay, so uh, in, when Kerry Mullis invented uh, PCR in 1983, they have a difficulty to um, use a DNA polymerase or tech, uh, DNA, normal DNA polymerase because the normal DNA polymerase uh, cannot withstand a really high temperature because the DNA polymerase is a protein, an enzyme. Uh, be, when enzyme being introduced uh, the high temperature so the 3D structure of the enzyme will be uh, what we call that my denatured. All right, when denatured, it cannot be act activated. So it uh, when Kerry Mullis first in invented PCR, uh, they have to you know introduce DNA polymerase on each cycle because when uh, when we when he put DNA polymerase in one cycle. So the apolim race will be denatured because of high temperature. So even though the uh, during that time uh, the PCR is uh, really uh, uh, a good invent invent inventions of uh, uh, biotechnology, but then it have a drawback because of the apolim race cannot withstand the high temperature. And then in 1985, Psy psyche. Uh, first published uh, uh, on the uh, PCR application when he can uh, seek, not sequence seek, amplify a beta globulin uh, a protein gene by using a DNA polymerase isolated from thermostable uh, thermophilus aquaticus. So when Psyche isolates the tech polymerase from uh, T. aquaticus, so it can withstand the high temperature of the PCR during uh, the process. So instead of by adding DNA polymerase in, inside, in each cycle, so Psyche can only add tech DNA polymerase at only once uh, at the start of the PCR. Then he 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 he. he uh, didn't add any DNA polymerase on the next cycles. Okay, so it become more how to say it, it become a more easy, all right, without any uh, deficiencies or any uh, deactivations of the DNA polymerase. So this is the caramelis. Uh, won a Nobel Prize back in 1993 in chemistry. So the funny thing is, uh, Kerry Mullis you know, uh, found this uh, magical idea to invent a PCR during uh, uh, he, he, he drove uh, on one night, right? On the late one night, he drove his uh, girlfriend maybe back to home. So he, her, he, uh, his girlfriend also is a uh, chemist, a scientist in chemistry. So when you know he make a conversation with uh, his girlfriends about uh, the work in the lab, and he found out that maybe he can invent a PCR technique. Right, so polymerase chain reactions PCR is a method in vitro cloning. So it's allow applications uh, specific DNA molecule fragments in vitro through a cycle of enzymatic DNA synthesis. The most popular and widely used technique in all field of biological studies probably. 
because PCR is really powerful tools in uh, molecular biology nowadays. So why? Because first, it's really simple process. Okay, it's the process mimic uh, DNA replications, but it's more simpler in the PCR. And second one is more powerful. The first one in terms of sensitivity, even though it's simple, but yet it's still sensitive, like the uh, uh, replications in the cells. And the process, even though in PCR, is really specific, right? And the third one is reliable, even though we do it in, in, in vitro, but the process is reliable. When the, the, uh, replication of DNA uh, is conserved, right? the, the fidelity is conserved uh, uh, during the replications in the PCR. And the third one is really fast. Okay, <coughs> okay uh, DNA replication. So the purpose yeah, is to du duplicate DNA molecule. The principle is to separate of the DNA double strands on the templates. So when the first a principle is uh, it have to separate the double helix of DNA of the target genes to become the single stranded DNA. So when the, the single stranded DNA is formed, the primer will be aligned to uh, a gene of interest right? and start to amplify or extensions of the new strand of DNA with, uh, with uh, the help of uh, DNA polymerase, of course, and the oxy ribonucleus triphosphate, we call it DNTPs, okay? And other proteins is involved, uh, such as uh, uh, what we call it? Nah, I will go through it one, one by one, <laughs> okay. Right, the three aspect of PCR, as I mentioned before, uh, it's very specific, it's very efficient, and also uh, the high fidelity. Okay, so the best the best way to understand PCR is to consider the reactions of components and how they combine to produce the best results. And each physical and chemical component of PCR can be modified to produce a potential increase in yield specificity or sensitivity. Okay, as you know. Uh, the ingredients of the PCR, right, it consists of DNA polymerase, it consists of primer, it consists of buffer, and it consists of uh, uh, magnesium, uh, magnesium ions, right, come from uh, magnesium chloride. So all of this, it can be optimized. So in terms of concentrations, in terms of volume, so when we optimize all these ingredients, we can get the optimized uh, high yield of products, uh, PCR products. Okay, so it's really important uh, at the first stage to optimize the conditions of the PCR, because before we proceed uh, to the uh, mass uh, productions, uh, when it's involved in PCR. Okay, so this is the basically the PCR reactions components. It consists of uh, DNA templates. DNA templates means that your, your gene of interest. A uh, primers. Primers consist of uh, forwards and reverse primers. And <coughs> enzyme uh, is a tag. We use tag polymerase or PFU polymerase. So I will explain a little bit to you the difference between tag and PFU polymerase. That there is a few versions of polymerase, but in this case, I mean, in your stage, maybe we only use a tag or PFU polymerase. And uh, all the DNTPS, all right, DATP, DTTP, DCTP, and DGTP. Okay, so D, uh, A for adenine, T for tyrosine, C for cytosine, and G for guanine. And it's also involved uh, magnesium ions, buffer, and sterile distilled water. Okay, so this is uh, you know a schematic diagrams on how the PCR uh, ingredients work during the uh, PCR reactions. So this is the DNA templates, and the yellow one is a forward uh, primer, and the uh, red one is the reverse primer. Okay, and this is all the NTPS. All right, the NTP. 
and either we use a tag polymerase or PFU polymerase and magnesium ion in the buffer right? usually buffer comes with the uh, DNA polymerase that you ordered so when you order for example tag polymerase so we come with the optimized buffer so when we order PFU polymerase then it comes with the specific uh, buffer uh, for the PFU uh, to optimize the uh, uh, reactions of the PSU during uh, the PCR. <coughs> okay, so uh, wait now. right. So basically, this is the steps that involve in the uh, PCR. So not not the step, the ingredient. All right. So the first one is DNA template. So then the DNA template is DNA containing region to be sequenced, size of target DNA to be amplified up to the 3 kilobase pair. So for example, uh, you have a plasmid, all right? So plasmid uh, and in the middle is your uh, uh, gene of interest that been flanked by two uh, uh, fragments. So the first fragment, second fragment from the uh, vector. And in the middle is your gene of interest. So in the PCR, you you objective is you to amplify your gene of interest rather than amplify uh, the whole plasmid itself. Okay, so size of the target it can be up until uh, three kilo base pair, which is uh, three thousand base pair. And the primers, there is a two sets of primers. Uh, generally, the primers is 20 to 30 nucleotide long, which is you have to design uh, the primer uh, based on your DNA templates, right? So that the primers can uh, align or bind to the specific site that only recognize and amplify your gene of interest. Okay, so the same. Uh, principle as in uh, the, the hybridizations okay so the primers or the oligonitrite the oligon, oligonucleotide that have been designed should be aligned or specific to your GOI gene of interest and generally it's like 20 to 30 nucleotide uh, longs okay so it cannot be too short and it cannot be too long all right there is a conse consequences when your primer is too long and your primer is too short. If too short, uh, it cannot bind the the, the specific specific specificity. No specificity. <laughs> the specific uh, of the uh, primer that can align to the uh, gene of, gene of interest is reduced. Right, if the your oligonucleotide is too short, whereas if the oligonucleotide uh, primer is too long, it tends to make a dimers. All right, it can bind to each other if the uh, primer is too long, more than thirty nucleotide long, and it's uh, synthetically uh, produced. And complement to the three prime ends of the target DNA, of course, and not complement to each other. So the forwards and the reverse should not be complements because it can bind to each other and the PCR reaction is, is failed. There is no amplica amplification will occur. And not containing inverted repeat sequence to avoid formations of internal structure, which is the primer dimer. Okay. And there is uh, rules okay when you uh, want to uh, synthesize or if you want to uh, mer up your oligonucleotide the GC content should be uh, 40 to 60 uh, percent for a better annealing okay because if you have a, uh, in your primer if you have many GC content more than 60 percent, the TM, the melting point of the primer will be become more higher. Okay, so it's not good uh, for the primer to anneal to the target gene. Uh, TM of the primer can be calculated to determine annealing temperature. Okay, this is the uh, cal calculations uh, manually. Yeah, you can calculate manually your uh, melting temp. Melting temperature is where the primer fall off from the target sequence. Whereas the annealing temperature is where 
primers bind to the uh, target. Okay, can you imagine? So when aniline, primer can bind to the target uh, gene. When it melting TM, the primer will be fall off from the target. So dicabut lah, dissociate. Okay, so to calculate the TM manually is is like this. So this is the formula. All right, four times uh, the uh, the count of uh, G plus C, and two times the counts of A plus T. Okay, so this is the uh, the the the, uh, the manual ways to calculate the TM of the primer. And actually, nowadays you can uh, calculate the TM. Uh, on, uh, by using online because it's more easy. Okay, let me show you uh, prime. Right. So this is example uh, of the online cal calculator for primers. So by by your labs. So, or, or NEB. Okay, I give you an example. So, let's choose tech DNA polymerase. And, okay, the tech polymerase with standard tech buffer. And the concentrations of the primer, usually we use like 100. Nano mole. And use example input. Okay. Right, so this is the first primer, which is forward primer, and this is the second uh, primer, which is uh, reverse primer. So if you can see, the GC content is not really high for the first primer, which is like only uh, 42%. And the TM melting temperature, the temperature that caused the primer will be fall off from the uh, target genes after annual, is like 58 of degree. And the primer of the uh, reverse primer, uh, the the reverse primer can contain 53% of GC and it consists from 17 nucleotides. This is 24 nucleotide sequence. And the TM uh, melting point is uh, 54 degree. Okay. And to find uh, uh, how we call it uh, melting temperature, you can add these two and divide by two so you can get only one tm right maybe it's around uh, around what wait let me calculate i'm really bad in math so i need a calculator 58 divided by two is equal 56 right so we can use uh, uh 56 degree for both uh primer for the tm lah. And the annealing temperature is uh, 49. Okay, usually uh, it's min uh, 56 minus 5 is uh, 51, around 5 lamb plus minus 5, 5. Okay, so both primer can anneal to the target sequence at 49 degree. Okay, so first it anneal at 49 degree. And after the extensions, after the primer uh, and then, uh, then a polymerase, uh, done doing extension then the primer have to be removed and uh, where the tm comes right so 51 degree or 56 degree the tm will be uh, the primer will be uh, fall off from the uh, target of your gene lah. so this is an example uh, the tm calculator online that you can use otherwise you can calculate it uh, by using manual formula like this Okay. Right. Then next number three is enzyme. Right. Usually tag polymerase or any one of the natural of the recombinant thermostable polymerase. So usually we going we will use a thermostable polymerase because uh, it uh, when we use thermostable polymerase it's stable up until uh, ninety five degree. Okay. Because in PCR during uh, to form a single stranded of DNA, 
we will introduce a very high temperature of 195 degrees. So all the protein that involved in the PCR have to withstand uh, such a high temperature maximum as uh, 95 degree and it's also high uh, procrastivity and tech polymerase have a 5 to 3 exo activity exonuclease or right? activity only no proofreading whereas on PFU polymerase it have both 5 to 3 and 3 to 5 prime exonuclease activity and it also has proof reading okay so this is uh, example uh, 5 to 3 and uh, 3 to 5 uh, 5 to 3 5 to 3 or 3 to 5 also have the proof reading uh, on the PFU okay so this is the difference between a tech polymerase and PFU then a polymerase okay so in tech polymerase uh, we isolated from uh, thermophilus bacteria so it's uh, archaea bacteria ter thermos aquaticus and the optimum temperature is uh, 70 to 80 uh, degree half life is 40 minutes at 95 degree lacks of 3 prime 5 prime proof, proof reading activity proof reading activity means that uh, one error in every 10 to the power of 4 nucleotide incorporated so when uh, a tech polymerase is used somehow it might happen an error mismatch so sometimes uh, uh, it reads T and it will bind to the G. Alright, no, eh, sorry, A is not bind to T. Instead of T, tech polymerase will introduce G. Okay, so that uh, one is an error mismatch. Lah. But it's the um, uh, error of mismatch is really low, still uh, considered to be low percentage. Whereas in PFU DNA polymerase, it's isolated from pyrococcus uh, phoriasis. And it has both 3' prime and 5' prime exonuclease activity. And the uh, fidelity, this is very interesting, the fidelity of the enzyme is 12 folder higher than tech polymerase. Right? It's very good. Uh, up until it cannot uh, allow any mismatch or any mistake during extensions. And the half-life also is like a uh, double up. Uh, from uh, tech polymerase 95 uh, up to two, 2 hours so this is uh, the uh, common pol uh, DNA polymerase that been used uh, in the labs okay so this one is comparisons that you can uh, read on your own Right. So in tech polymerase, uh, fidelity only one time, whereas PFU six to ten times better. Okay. Uh, so next, let's go to the PCR cycle, which is it consists of three steps. Okay. So why three step? Because initial denaturation, denaturation is one step. Denaturation and extension is one step, and final extension is one step. Okay, so let's go uh, one by one. So the first one is uh, init initial denaturation. The temperature is around 95 to 90, 98 degree, and the times involved is only uh, 30 seconds. Only one cycle is needed. The purpose of initial denaturation is to denature the DNA template. So the DNA template is uh, essentially in double, uh, double strand. So when we introduce initial denaturation at 95 degree, it will, you know, break up and form a single stranded DNA so that primer can line. And the next step uh, is uh, denaturation, annealing, and extensions. So Again, there is a, a second denaturation. This is initiation, uh, initial of the generations. Same uh, temperature, but then this one is less uh, uh, faster, lah. Uh, not, not less fa faster than uh, uh, initial denaturation. It's only took like five to uh, ten seconds cycle one cycle to denature template DNA, and after DNA is uh, denatured, the primer need to anneal. Uh, when it's come annealing and the 
TM points it depend on the primer design. So usually it's between 46 and 60 degree. Okay. And time involved is 30 seconds. Cycles uh, cycle is 25 to uh, 30. Lah. Okay. Primer annual to target sequence. And the next one is extensions. Extension where uh, DNA polymerase start to amplify all the uh, target DNA. And uh, temperature is uh, 72 degree and the times 30 seconds per kilo best pair. So during extension, there is a little bit trick or tips. Okay, so for example, uh, you have a 3 kb gene of interest that need to be amplified. Okay, so three. Uh, if you have uh, three second is needed to amplify one kb okay so if you have three kb of uh, gene of interest you just time three lah so basically you need uh, 90 seconds all right per uh, three kb and the cycle is one primus extension as a complement nucleotide are incorporated okay so actually this is not one lah, this one okay can one can one so the whole from denaturations and ex extensions, it will be repeated 25 to 30. So means that denature and the link extension, one cycle, the night balik. Denaturation and the link extension, cycle number two, night balik, denaturation and link extension, cycle number three, sampai 30 cycle. Okay, 30 cycle. And after finish uh, 30 cycles, uh, we have a final extensions. Okay, so at 72 degree. For five to ten minutes, only one cycle is required. The purpose of final extension is to primer extension and cooling of the PCR product or or amplicon. Amplicon ni uh, the amplified product lah. Okay, and last one the uh, amplicon or PCR product is a uh, hot uh, reactions until uh, uh, remove in infinity lah. So you can store it for degree. Okay, so this is uh, which, uh, basically the graph of the PCR, the standard thermocycle PCR. Okay, uh, so step one, denaturation around 95 degree, and after that it will be drop off until 60 degree, where primers is start to anneal at this uh, second uh, single stranded of DNA, right? And again, it goes up to uh, extensions at 72 degree okay for how many minutes uh, 30 seconds per kilo best pair right so below that when it finish this is the one cycle from from here to here is one cycle okay then for for the next cycle the second round again that can I uh, uh, come to first step back denaturations of template and turun balik and a link extension denaturation so on and so forth anti 30 cycle okay right so this is the steps uh, in the PCR the first one is step one is denaturation template that needs it until the 35 degree <coughs> denature to single stranded and step two, uh, temperature is lowered. Uh, the primer annual to the target sequence. All right, annealing temperature, primer bind, primer bind, and then extension forward start batcher, reverse start batcher, and after extension, so you have like a copy. So this is uh, the initial uh, target gene, and this is the amplicon, your, your PCR product. Okay, so target application. Okay, you have one start from uh, one gene, all right, or one DNA, or one gene of interest, and uh, after one cycle, uh, they do two copies, two cycle, four copies, three cycles, so on and so forth. But when anti thirty cycle, you have like how many is this? Sa pulo ratus ribu, pulo ribu ratus ribu million, pulo million ratus million billion right more than around 1 billion copies of applicant that you can get after 30 completed after 30 cycle okay
Okay, so you are rich with empty con a PCR product. Okay. All right. So this is the example of commercial available tag. So you can either use uh, PFU tags uh, by Fermenters. So this is the company name, Fermenters. My tag, Master Mix by BioLine. Fusion Green Head Chef tags by Thermo Scientific. Okay, so this is examples of uh, PCR product being quantified in the agar gel. Okay, so is this okay? This is the leather, alright. Your DNA marker, and first fragment, second fragment, third fragment, fourth fragment, and fifth fragments. Okay, so first let's see the first fragment and second fragment. Okay. So if you can see here, the second fragment is uh, thicker than the first fragment, right? Which is this is consists of uh, many PCR product as compared to the first one, lah. And the third one is none of them been amplified. So which means that uh, the primers you've been used is not compatible with uh, fragment number three. And fragment number four is the same as in fragment number two. And if you can see here in fragment number five, right, it's not suitable, right? There is, uh, uh, usually when you do a PCR, right? And so the PCR product, when you want to, uh, when you want to uh, uh, quantify your PCR product, you will run a piece uh, agarose gel. So in agarose gels, if you want to uh, confirm that your PCR is successfully or not, first, you have to see um, how thick your bank, right? So, for example, uh, fragment number two give a very thick bank, so it shows that the PCR is successfully because there is a, like a billions of epicon, it give you thicker bank. Second one, the band should be pure in such a way that it's only it should appear only one bank okay so macam ni kan it only have one bank means that your primer align perfectly to your target genes so that's only your target gene is being amplified okay so bila target gene you only target gene you you amplify you only have one uh, kind of gene that been amplified over and over and over and over again so that you uh, uh, supposedly have one band, right? But then in uh, well number five, uh, piece of fragment number five, there is uh, like a three fragments, right? So this shows that your primer uh, is not aligned or it not doesn't bind to a specific uh, target sequence. Okay, instead of uh, bind to your target uh, gene of interest. It can bind to other places. Okay, so bila dia bind to other places, it amplified that nonsense places lah, nonsense target lah. Okay, so that's why it end up you have like uh, a few fragments. So one, two, three. So how to overcome this troubleshoot, this condition is you have to optimize your annealing temperature. Okay, so I will explain to you how you how you uh, uh, recommended to optimize your uh, annealing temperature uh, later on okay so this is an example of pcr thermocycler uh, this is uh, multiple band of gel electrophoresis application of uh, pcr products okay first extract, extract of pcr product precon for desired band gel extraction kits okay so after you amplify your uh, uh, pcr product Okay, you have to run your gel electrophoresis and this band, right? This band you need to purify. Okay, you need to purify. Macam, if you remember, kita buat, uh, I learn, uh, no, I teach you how to do uh, plasmic extractions, right? The uh, second uh, final step uh, before DNA resuspend, you have to purify the plasmid or purify the DNA. The purpose of the DNA purification is to get rid 
of uh, nonsense proteins or nonsense, uh, you know, whatever the carbohydrate or whatsoever in the cell. So we want to get rid of it until we get a pure DNA. Okay. The same go to the PCR. So after we complete the PCR process, we run everything in the agarose gel and we need to purify this band. So what we have to do is we cut this uh, specific side of the band. So kita potong band ni. Then we will purify during uh, using a kit. So there is a specific kit to purify a PCR product so that we can remove uh, then a polymerase, we can remove uh, all the buffers, um, uh, magnesium ion, we can remove the primers uh, on the PCR product. Okay, So when we remove everything, we can get a pure uh, PCR product. Okay, So this is the kit that they use. Lah. Okay, Right, uh, last but not least, I will explain to you what is touchdown PCR and step down PCR. Uh, okay, so as I told you just now, um, to troubleshoot uh, this uh, failure when you have a, a multiple band uh, in one PCR reaction because of the uh, annealing temperature is not suitable. So to tackle the problem, we will use a touch down PCR. Okay, so uh, I will explain to you uh, first uh, the the principle behind it, the, the touch down PCR, where uh, during uh, annealing, right, primer bind to, uh, after DNA to the uh, what we call denatured, right, to single stranded DNA, primer start to anneal. Okay, so primer start to anneal, and after that, uh, prim primer will fall out from the target gene by the TM uh, melting temperature again. Okay, so if you lower the uh, annealing temperature, not TM, annealing temperature, it will increase the... Uh, what we call that? the ability of the primer to bind to, uh, to the target gene. Okay, means that kalau you reduce kan uh, the temperature, primer tadi akan lagi senang nak bind uh, at the gene. Okay, so dia punya alamak, dia ada term dia. Saya lupa lah. Sekejap, sekejap. Eh. Ah, yeah, it will increase the affinity. Okay, so when we, you reduce the temperature and the temperature, it will increase the affinity of the primer towards the target gene. Okay, but then other the mere disadvantage or drawback. Bila you reduce, memang dia akan increase the affinity, but it also increase uh, the affinity of the primer to bind to the non-specific sites. Okay. So the, uh, instead of uh, increase the uh, binding toward the target, they put increase binding to any side lah, the other side. So that's why it end up when uh, you run agarose gel, there are a few bands. Okay. So first, so when you increase the temperature, annealing temperature, up until almost the same level as uh, melting temperature, it will reduce. Uh, the affinity uh, binding to the target but it gives you a specific uh, characteristics for the primer that allow only bind to the target sequence okay so bila you increase can temperature of the and uh, uh, increase can annealing temperature of the primer the akan affinity to akan reduce but then bila they reduce they can only bind to the specific sites Okay, you get what I mean? Okay, itu kalau you increase kan. Kalau you re, uh, lower the adrenaline temperature, it increase the uh, uh, binding toward the target, uh, toward the gene. But then it's also increase 
uh, the primer to bind to the non-specific site okay to the near drawback lah. okay so in uh, TD uh, touched on PCR uh, they want to find the optimized uh, temp the temperature optimized conditions for the primer to bind to the, uh, the target sequence so what we what they did is they divide uh, the cycle into two phase okay so in the first phase uh, the, the nature lah, initial denature summer lah, 30 95 for the three minutes and masuk cycle denature annealing uh, and elongate so 55 and during annealing so the tm calculated right the tm calculated you increase in uh, 10 degree so for example uh uh, melting temperature is around uh, 50 and you increase 10 is around uh, 60 lah, right okay for 45 uh, second but bear in mind every time step 2 to 5 are repeated so 2 to 5 are repeated for 10 to 15 times the annealing temperature should be decreased by 1 degree per cycle okay so until the estimated TM of the primer being used is reached or slightly bypassed, approximately 10 to 5 cycle. Lah. Means that, uh, for example, uh, let me calculate. So for example, you have 50 plus 6. Uh, 10 is equal to 60, 60, 10 cycle, then the 50 back. Okay, pa. All right. So, for example, this is 50. Your TM is 50. You tambah dengan 10, is around 60 lah. All right, you start with 60 degree. And, for example, you ambil close cycle. All right, each, each cycle, it decrease or one uh, uh, degree. Okay, so 10, 10 turun 1 1 1 1 1 until estimated tm so until kat sini jadi 50 balik alright so this is second phase i will explain to you second phase lah okay so uh, 50 tambah 10 jadi 60 60 the each cycle dia kurang 1 1 1 1 which is pro cycle and at last bila dia masuk second phase alright bila dia masuk second phase when it enter the second phase Annealing temperature dia as a TM point is like 50 lah. 50 or 50 plus, uh, 50 minus 5. Alright. Uh, 45 degree for 45 uh, second. Okay. And elong elongation sama, elongation sama. And this is the, the last lah. Uh, termination step. Okay. So the reason is when during the first phase, alright. Bila the increase kan the punya TM, of course the affinity of the primer untuk binding to the target is reduced. But for those primer yang successfully bind, uh, uh, successfully bind to the target uh, is very specific, right? It's allow the primer to specifically bind to the target. Kalau kita increase kan, saya cakap tadi lah. So in in the first phase, it only allow the primer to bind to the uh, target sequence right so they tak benarkan primer to bind dekat other sides of the sequence so itu purpose dia even though the affinity is reduced tapi product yang dia dapat tu is uh, the amplicon is being produced is exactly the same as your target sequence lah. It, uh, they want to avoid uh, any uh, nonsense uh, amplifications alright so the, even though primer to susah nak bind tapi it can still bind on the specific side and it amplify the specific side so the amplicon or the pizza product uh, being produced on the phase one is totally your uh, target genes completely your target genes okay even though tak banyak even though the PR product is not that much okay when it enter to the second phase right so during the uh, denaturation annealing and elongation so it will use the amplicon your your pcr product tadi during the first one 
and it will amplify your PCR product. So the the reduced can temperature too, so the primer can you know happily bind to the amplicon. So it uh, you uh, you don't need to worry your primer bind to the, the specific sites, but that's it. So only have your amplicon there. So it bind to amplicon, amplify your amplicon uh, in in uh, like billion copies. Okay, so that's uh, the principle of the uh, TD lah, TD PCR. So critical step, many PCR machines uh, also employ a temperature gradient function and combining TD PCR over gradient offer an additional way to optimize the product. So we call it also a, gra a gradient PCR. Okay, so this is, uh, yeah, I put it as, uh, you know, a schematic diagram of uh, the TD. Okay, so this is the first, uh, first phase and this is the second phase. Okay, during first phase, this is the initial denaturations. Okay, normal lah. And when it entered to the second uh, part, denaturation, annealing and extensions. So, for example, here, uh, this is the TM, final TM. So, so the ambil yang ni lah, 55. So, for example, this 55 kan, 50, I tolak 5, jadi 51. Faham eh? So, uh, six uh, cycle 10 to 15 cycle so the temperature range is uh, from 66 until 55 so it's uh, berapa ni dalam apa ni 11 eh ha oh sebelah ha eh tambah 11 no problem ah betul lah lemah gila matematik <laughs> okay. So, uh, 60, 66 to 55, around 10 to 15 PCR cycle and extension, final extension lah. So, ni dia cara dia. So, this is your uh, target, specific target uh, sequence. And during annealing, temp, uh, primer akan bind kat sini, primer akan bind kat sini. Even though the affinity is reduced, but it still can bind and will produce uh, your amplicon PCR product, it can get rid of nonsense uh, amplification. Lah. Okay, so when it comes to second stage, it will use this uh, PCR product, the amplicon, to generate another uh, amplicon, the PCR product. But at this time, it the temperature of nailing is reduced uh, uh, to 51. So that primer to happily bind here, happily bind here. So it cannot bind to anywhere else. It only can bind at these two sides. Lah. So that's why it increased the PCR cycle 20 to 25. So that uh, amplicon yang produce tu lagi banyak. Okay. So this is uh, the basically the principle of the TD. Alright. So this is what uh, this is uh, heating block lah. Alright. Heating block ni apa ni jam jam rendi. Right. So this is the consumable that you might use. Uh, so tips, pipette. This is the PCR tubes. So this is the PCR tubes, and this is the uh, master mix tubes. Right. Sometimes, kita malas kan nak add everything, nak add buffer lah, nak add DNA polymerase whatsoever. So we just buy uh, ready made. Alright, ready made. Dalam ni semua dah ada. So, you just put in your gene je. So, semua dah ada dalam ni. Buffer, DNA, polymer semua dah ada. So, you just run lah. Tapi kalau macam ni, you kena bubur one by one lah. Okay. Right, I guess I stop until here. Multiple PCR. Then I will continue. Uh, so, banyak-banyak lagi. Tak banyak lah. Right, so we we'll continue on the next class, which is uh, after Hari Raya lah, after your Hari Raya break. Okay, so uh, I will stop until here. So I'm going to see you guys back after the Raya break. I hope everyone stay safe and uh, selamat Hari Raya in advance. Okay, so during Hari Raya, janganlah melawat pada mana, you know, just stay at home lah. So avoid any... Uh, not customer, any relative to come to your house. Lah. First, it can reduce uh, your parents' punya duit hari raya lah, tak payah bagi orang lain. And second one, you pun tak payah nak kena buat mak you, tak suruh kena buat banyak kuih, you know, tak payah kena masak rendang, so on and so forth. You can just relax in your home, watching Netflix or playing uh, video game. 
things okay so thank you so much guys hope to see you uh, on the next session assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh